Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Arriba, arriba, yo no soy marinado, soy capitán, welcome to The Savage Nation. If you have any idea what this means, yo no soy marinado, soy capitán, it means I am the captain, I am not a sailor. It's interesting to me because... This line was uh, used, let's say, lifted in the television show Ray Donovan. Remember one of the titles two weeks ago was You're a Sailor, Not a Captain? It came right from La Bamba by Richie Valens, which is a great song from 1958, which came back to me after the Trump interview last night for reasons unknown, except to my neurons, why I have remembrances of not petite Madeleines, <laughs> but of Richie Valens. That's, again, an obtuse reference to those of you who have a reference to anything. Also, today we'll play Buddy Holly. That'll be the day we're playing 1950s music on the Savage Nation in honor of the 1950s when the uh, chrome was thick and the women were straight. And today everyone wants to talk about what I said yesterday, which is that I call Trump the Churchill of our times. That got the attention of the media. Michael Savage says, Trump is the Winston Churchill of our time. Now, some people understood what I was saying, and they agreed with me. Newsmax got it. World Net Daily got it. Of course, the Daily Caller ran it first, but they didn't get it. They made a mockery of Donald Trump. They said he's not classy enough to be Winston Churchill, uh, which is, which is kind of stupid. Because although Winston Churchill was a great orator and a great writer, you don't know much about Char Churchill's background. But if you remember the movie Gallipoli? Gallipoli. Well, Gallipoli is actually a geographic locale in the Bosphorus where British troops were led by Winston Churchill to their death over and over again to Turkish machine guns. So Churchill was actually a very poor leader in World War I, but a very great leader in World War II. So no one is perfect in plain English. Do you get it? This is the same problem we have with thin people in radio, people who have no knowledge, monodimensional, one-string banjos, who keep referring to the Founding Fathers as though they were perfect people. And this leads us to the problem with the Republican Party today and the so-called conservatives who keep wanting someone who doesn't exist. There is no perfect person. There's no perfect leader. You're never going to get this perfect leader, ever. So when I said on the interview yesterday with Donald Trump, I, I don't know the exact words. I'll have to find them. I don't want to misquote my own, myself because I'm liable to have to sue myself for a retraction. <laughs> I don't want to have to get my lawyer to sue Michael <laughs> for a retraction. I have to find it. It's actually very good. It's at the end of the uh, one got it right. It was in the Newsmax. And they got it exactly. I said, you're a rich man, but you know this is going to cost a billion and a half dollars. Savage said of how Trump would finance his own campaign. You surely don't want to throw all of that out on your own. Are you considering having people donate money or not? And then he responded. I asked if he would establish strict voter ID laws through an executive order. That was the first question I asked. And then I cut him off because I realized if he answered it, he'd be, he'd be crucified by the vermin in the media. I mean the liberals in the media. I mean the phonies in the media. Then we talked about the Iran nuclear deal. Savage pledged his support and declared, you're the lion, you're the Winston Churchill of our time, keep hitting them real hard. Question for the audience, in what, in what way is Donald Trump the Churchill of our time? Because Churchill wasn't even the Churchill of his time in terms of reality. Once you lionize someone, as many thin people in the media do about the founding fathers, like somehow they're godly. How could a founding father be godly? He was just a man with a musket. I love people, oh, he was so different than us. They put their life on the line. A, slaveholders. B, uh, let's see, what else? The Whiskey Rebellion, where they got a larger army against American citizens who didn't want to pay taxes on whiskey after the Revolutionary War. They were people. They were politicians, just like we have today. Some of them were better. Some were brighter. But please don't glorify anyone and tell me that Someone is this, someone is that. They're not better than us. They're not worse than us. There are better people and worse people in every generation. That's what I'm trying to say. 855-400-728 to everyone's buzzing about 
Donald Trump interview with Michael Savage on the Savage Nation. If you care to comment on that, uh, the phone number is 855 And I think the, na- the main question is, in what way is Trump the Churchill of our time? I didn't say in all the ways, always. I don't think Trump paints watercolors. I don't think Trump is an alcoholic like Churchill. In fact, Trump doesn't drink to his credit. Did you know that? Did you know that? You said, you know, it's funny. AP did a hit piece on Trump yesterday, and they ended up by saying, and he doesn't drink alcohol. I swear to God, like, that was a bad thing. And he doesn't kill fetuses. Hey, Trump doesn't kill fetuses, man. Unbelievable. Let's see, what else can we think of in our cesspools? What was the best question answer in the Trump interview from yesterday? Has your mind changed about Trump being a real candidate? Do you think Trump will have the sta- staying power to shake up the gop? Uh, let's see. Now we could talk about the Iran deal, the sellout of the United States of America and Israel to the terrorist nation of, uh, of Iran. We can talk about the planned infanticide videos and how they've been blocked from releasing them by a corrupt judge. Big game hunting, if you want to. I don't want a lot of uh, hunter calls because I attacked hunters the other day, and I'll stick to it. Unless you're hunting for food, really, don't tell me you're a hunter. You're, you're just basically a killer. You like killing things. And because you can't do school shootings, you go and shoot deer and antelope and, and bear. Just because you missed the school shootings as a young man. Okay, I'm, I'm tr- getting your attention. I'm trying to rile up the hunters out there. You know, do people really sit in their basements with guns, oiling them and like, yeah, oiling the breeches? I have guns. I never even opened the, the cabinet. I, once in a year, I open it up to make sure they're not rusting. <laughs> well, you're not a real man. A real man shoot, <laughs> shoots living things that are defenseless. Hmm. Oh, I'm having a coffee. It feels so good. Yesterday, I had the rock, uh, a um, an energy drink. I was flying till like two in the morning. I loved it. I felt optimistic. I felt like I was 18 again. It was such an unusual feeling to feel good that I got afraid of it. Did you ever get afraid of feeling good when you you know you've been down you've been down so long it starts to look like up to you? I felt so good yesterday. It's like a great antidepressant. Unbelievable. With no medication, which is, of course, why they're a threat to the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> for $2, you feel good for a very long period of time. Well, now I'm coffee. I'm on, on the coffee right now. I'm on a new diet that's so horrible. No carbs, except fruit. I know you don't want to hear it, but I'm, I'm telling you, I gave up bagels. Do you realize that when you're on a, a regular diet, what you're actually eating, when you think about it? I mean, I've written books on nutrition since the 70s. But I don't really pay attention to to wheat because I've lived on wheat. It's the staple of man. You know, bread is the staple of mankind. Go to the Middle East, go to Mexico, go to Central America. Everywhere you look, tortillas, right? Tamales, pita bread. Everyone uses wheat. Nothing wrong with it. But if you if you want, if you want to lose weight and you give up, like I had a bagel every morning. Why? It's easy. You you cut it, you pop it in the toaster, and you put something on it. You know, I don't use butter. Okay, so you put on the fake butter, which is worse for you than butter. So then I don't put that on it, so I put hummus on it. Hummus? I, hummus, sorry. We're not talking about the Supreme Court ruling. I put hummus on the bagel. Uh, and a tomato. I love tomatoes. I grow them. It's the end of the tomato season. So, uh, yeah, but you add it up. What is it, 100 calories per bagel? Then you have, let's say, a piece of bread with lunch. That's number two. Number three, you go to dinner, you're going to eat a, a bread. Oh, I shouldn't eat the bread, but you eat the bread. Bread, 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 right? Now add in some alcohol. You cut out the alcohol and the, and the bread. Stop it, Robert. You cut out the alcohol and the bread. How many thousands of calories a week are you saving? You don't want to talk. I get it. I don't want to, like the, uh, the anti-gluten people calling. Please, whatever you do, do not give me an anti-gluten caller or a pro-gluten caller. I don't want to hear it. And it'll lead the show nowhere. You want to talk about the Trump interview with Michael Savage? You want to talk about that? Fine. We can. Uh, here's a soundbite. I'm going to be a little all over the map today because I want to. And why am I playing Richie Valens' La Bamba? A, because it came to my mind last night. I never fight with my subconscious. See, I trust my subconscious. That's the difference between me and you. Most liberals are terrified of the quote themselves. You don't know what yourself is. What's yourself? It's your subconscious yelling at you because you're an idiot. So they medicate it. That's why they lose jobs on radio stations. 
That's where they're found foaming at the mouth by their wife in a closet. And she has to say, there, there, dear, it'll be okay. I earn a living for you. That's why they sit in their pajamas sending hateful things to blogs that no one reads. So my subconscious speaks to me. It says, Yo, uh, La Bamba. And I go, well, yeah, Richie Valens, 1958. Yo no soy marinado, soy capitan. Wonderful line. I loved Richie Valens. He died, I think. Was he in the plane crash? I think he was. He was in the famous plane crash. Those of you into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, yo no soy marinara. We're not talking about marinara sauce. Marinara means uh, sailor. We're not talking about, I know I was talking about pasta, so you think when I say, yo no soy marinara, you think right away I'm putting down Italians. And I'm saying I don't like marinara sauce. I didn't say that. Can you see that I'm in a, in a, in a nice mood? Do you get it? Do you understand that it's nice to be okay? that we don't have to eat our hearts out every second of the day because a monster is running the country and trying to destroy America and the world. Do you understand that we don't have to eat our hearts out? 855-407-28 is the phone number. Let me entertain you. We have a sound bite. <laughs> this is clip 27 is John Boehner on why he cannot golf with the destroyer of the free world. Listen to 27. Trying to find common ground between the left and the right. Uh, is more difficult. There's no question about it. If I get on to see President Obama, the right begins to wonder what I'm up to. The left begins to wonder what the president's up to. You know, the president suggested, hey, you think it's too much trouble if we play golf again? And I have to look at him and say, yes. Because uh, it, it just, everybody gets... Uh, bent out of shape. Bent out of shape, worried about what we're up to. Uh, when all we're really going to do is play golf. All we want to do is play golf. You loser, you. You disgusting loser, you. You're playing golf while the world burns. You're playing golf while the destroyer of the free world is giving Iran a nuclear weapon. You're playing golf while babies are being sold for their body parts. You loser, you. You lowlife Midwestern. I don't want to go on and on. I'm not Joe Pesci. Shut up. I'm doing radio. I mean, I may like you, but you can't interrupt the show just because you want to bark. Talking to my dog, just so you know, I do yell at him once in a while. Again, don't idealize my relationship with Teddy. I never hit him. I don't yell at him. But if he does that during a show, it's over already. He's getting old. 11, he's starting to act like he has like some kind of senility. Box during a show, inappropriate behavior once in a while. He's slow. Sometimes he's too slow. And I'm always like, quick, 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 quick. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Get in the car. It's like, okay, come on. I got to get out of here. And he like drags himself over to the car. He's not crippled. Just likes to hang me up a bit. Eight five five four seven. That was that was Boehner on why he can't golf with the destroyer of the free world. Romney's worse. Actually, they're cut from the same cloth. Romney is is the same as Boehner. They're cut from the same Republican cloth. Who called them country club Republicans? Not me. People before me. Who called them check pants Republicans? I did. They are useless old white men who are terrified of their own shadow. They have made America weak. They have destroyed our standing in the world. They have caved into the destroyer of the free world. And what else can I say about them that's negative? Let's see. I'll think about it. I'll be back in a minute with more negativity about the Republican Party than you ever wanted to hear. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. I can't believe it. I just stumbled on another story. It says, patience pays off for $70 million Powerball winners. I don't play the lottery. I don't play Powerball, but you know you won't believe this. I swear, I swear on Boehner's life that in my hand I have six numbers. I dreamed these numbers a long time ago. They fell out of one of my notebooks Monday night. I meant to bet on it. If I find out that I didn't bet it in the one, I may have to do it to my, harm myself on air. Is it a six number thing, Robert? How many numbers? Oh, no, stop it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die if this is the right number. My assistant's here. I just found it. It was a sheet of paper. Okay, we talked about Trump, intuition, gluten, <laughs> dog care, lions. I love guys who are anti-animals and mock animals all their life. Whoa, I eat animals. <laughs> I eat animals. Now suddenly they love lions. I love, don't you love it how cynical? 
People without children are suddenly anti-abortion. I just love this. How cynical can the world be? Steve, KBET Radio, welcome. On your mind is what? Michael, intuition. Intuition, uh, someone once said, is the most powerful part of our intellect because it tells us what to do, but not necessarily why to do it. We must follow it. I think you're a very intuitive person after listening to you for many years. You don't reach out to people's, just their ears, you reach out to their souls. And I appreciate that, Michael. Well, how do I get into a soul? That's a, a, um, a powerful statement. I know it's true. I've heard it from radio experts that there are many good people in radio and they can read facts. They're fact readers, but they don't enter people's uh, souls. How do you do that? Well, you talk about world issues. You talk about yourself, your own life, the, 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 the idiosyncrasies of your own life. People relate to the negative, the positive. You're like the guy next door, not just the man on the airwaves reaching millions of people. You know, oh, you mean because oh, I, I mean because I open the door up to my soul a little bit of what's really going on. You do, you do, absolutely. Well, what, what's there? I mean, what's there to hide? What, what, what's the big risk? What are people so afraid of? I, I don't understand. Why doesn't Rush Limbaugh and his little minions ever tell us about their real lives instead of faking it? Why don't they just tell us something about it? Why don't they pull back the curtain instead of telling us how great they are, calling themselves great Americans? How much of that can you take? Look, I don't have anything against them. I really don't. You know, we're all on the same team, right? Sure. Oh, you know, saying there is no team. Get that through your head. There's no conservative team in America. It's each man for himself. Never forget it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. I am not a journalist. I'm a talk show host. I have opinions. I'm biased, period. End of story. The rest of them all are biased. They don't tell you that, though. I'm for Trump. Point blank. Best choice we have. Donald Trump joins us right now in the Savage Nation. Donald, thank you for being with us. What's on your mind today? Great honor. That's an amazing honor for you to say that is uh, tremendous. I appreciate it, Michael. But, Donald, why should I hide it? I mean, people make believe that they're not biased. You know and I know the media is biased one way or the other. They all pretend that they're scientists in a laboratory with a pipette in their mouth. They're all biased. They all have an axe to grind. Look what they're doing to you, smearing you every day with lies. Garbage, pure garbage, where they let Obama get away with virtual murder, give, give the bomb to Iran. Why is the media not saying one word about what Obama is doing to wreck this nation, Mr. Trump? Well, he is doing a terrible job. He's been a terrible president. Uh, the person that likes him most, you know, I always say is Jimmy Carter, because Jimmy's now number two. But, Donald, let's be clear. We know that we have a problem with illegals. We know that um, we have illegals voting in this country. We know that to vote in Mexico, every eligible Mexican has to have a tamper-proof photo ID card with a thumbprint and an embossed hologram. Would you use an executive action to establish strict voter ID laws in the U.S. if you became president? Well, you know, something has to be done, and I can't believe it. Where they, take, they want to take away cards, they want to take away identification. I assume that means somebody could vote ten times. I mean, who the hell is going to know the difference? But, you know, it's incredible when you look. And you speak of Mexico, and I have great, you know, I have so many people from Mexico. They work for me. They're wonderful people. They're great people. And I respect Mexico as a country. The problem is their leaders are too smart for us. They're very cunning, and they're very smart, and they're ripping up. They are ripping off our nation like you've never seen. And very interestingly, if you want to become a citizen of Mexico, it's almost impossible. It's so rigorous. It's so hard to become a citizen. They put you through the grinder, and you just can't do it. And yet in our country, boom, they walk right over the border, and everybody just comes in and has a good time, and we pay for them, whether it's prison or hospitals or anything. I mean, in California, I don't know if you saw the story, almost 50% of the people trying to get, like, applying for driver's licenses are illegals. The whole thing is just insane. So how come, oh. Donald Trump, we can't upgrade to Mexican standards without being called racist? Why is it that we can't require voter ID, tamper-proof photo ID cards with a thumbprint, as they have in Mexico? Again, I have to go back. Don't you think it's a good idea to use an executive action to establish strict voter ID in the U.S.? I know I don't want to nail you. I don't want to get you to say uh, yes, and then you'll, they'll nail you for that. So, uh, Trump goes on right-wing savage show and says, voter ID law. And right away, they start screaming racism. I get it. I know what they do. I know the game. So you I guess you can't. Identification. You go to a store, you need identification to buy something. You have to have identification. And it's incredible to me that people can fight it. OK, so immigration is one big problem. But there's another big problem, which is our military, which has been decimated under Barack Obama. What about the bomb for Iran? What would you do if you became president? What would you do to stop this pathway to a nuclear weapon? 
inconceivable that that deal is being approved and inconceivable that Chuck Schumer, who I always thought loved Israel, to be honest with you, that he's going to approve it. Because Israel is in such danger now. And the whole Middle East, I mean, look, the place is a total disaster, what's going on in the Middle East. And you look at what's happening, and it's incredible that this could have happened. But Israel... Wait, wait, uh, Donald, has Schumer come out and said he's going to support it? Well, you know, nobody knows what he's going to do. I think nobody knows. And it's, actually, I'm surprised that Israel isn't putting tremendous pressure on Schumer because they do have a lot of power over Schumer. And I can't believe that Schumer is taking the stance. And nobody, I don't think, and really knows. I think most people think he's going to actually support it. You know the amazing thing about that? There are a couple of amazing things. The 24-day period. What idiot would allow 24 days? And, you know, the 24-day period doesn't start for a long time because they have to go through a whole process before it starts ticking. So they have 24-day period, but it's a lot longer than that. And the other thing, and it's just so simple to understand, are prisoners, where they say, we have four people in there. Let them out. Fellas, you got to let them out. And think of it. These people are in prison and Kerry and Obama said they didn't want to mention the prisoners because they didn't want to complicate the negotiation. You say to yourself, what's complicated? You say, hey, by the way, it's good for all of us. Let the prisoners out. Yeah, if you have the right messenger, I guarantee you if that were, those prisoners would be gone. They should have been gone at the beginning of the negotiation, not now. It's way late. But they should have been gone right at the beginning. We have four people over there. One's in there because he's a, he's a Christian. Uh, we have four people in the roughest prison, and they've been over there for a long period of time. And we make a deal. And then, of course, you look at all of the different places where we're fighting. They don't want to bring up one thing has nothing to do with the other. And on top of that, we're giving them billions and billions of dollars. i got to tell you, if Iran was a stock, you would buy immediately. You'd make a lot of money. <laughs> the fact that Kerry Ketchup has given Iran uh, a handout, in other words, Iran is going to allow be allowed 24 days before inspectors can access suspected nuclear sites. And what's even worse is yesterday Iran raised the stakes. You know as a negotiator, you wrote the art of the deal many years ago, Donald. What they did was they got everything they wanted, so now they know we, they have tremendous strength, we have weakness. They raised the stakes yesterday. You know what they said in Iran? I'll tell you what. You want a soil sample to see if it has any uh, isotopic activity? We're going to provide you with the soil. You can't even take it out on your own. What kind of deal is this? That's In 24 days, Iran can hide weaponization activity, centrifuge manufacturing, centrifuge components, uranium stockpiles, missile components, and other things in 24 days. This is not a deal. This is a sellout, Donald, and you know it, and you've been speaking out on it. What's wrong with saying it, though? It's a disgrace. And how he allows this to happen. And what we should have done is increase the sanctions, doubled them up, and these people would have given us everything we wanted. It's such an embarrassment. Our country is so embarrassed by so many things. You know, one of the other things with the Iran deal, the, the chief negotiators are very smart. You know, the Persians have always been great negotiators, known great negotiators, the Iranians, the Persians. What happens is the, the chief negotiator goes back to Iran, and they're dancing and celebrating his big victory in the streets, okay, because it's a total victory. But, you know, if you look at Iran, they're going to be wealthy, they're going to be powerful, they're going to have the nuclear weapons now, and it probably will lead to a whole nuclear all over the Middle East. I mean, it's probably going to be a proliferation all over the Middle East. It is one of the dumbest deals I've ever seen. It, it just So why, why then Obama want, why did Obama push it so hard? Why does he need this deal? What is he seeking? Who can know? You know, I said he would look so great if he walked away from that table right now. I said that two weeks ago. I said it a month ago. The other thing, did you ever see a deal that took so long to get done? This deal went on forever. And that's called tapping. You know, I do that when I have a deal. I don't know if I want to make it. I might make it. I might. So you tap the people. Oh, tap, tap, tap. It's called tapping. I guarantee you that during the tapping period, they have been working like hell to put up, you know, to, to do what they were trying to do which is pretty obvious to me as far as I'm concerned. But I don't think it even matters because this deal is so bad they can do whatever they want to do. Who's going to catch him? Donald Trump, you've got important businesses to run. I have a question for you. What about the millions, the tens of millions of Americans who have been excited by your campaign? Why is there no donation page where we can you know, help people contribute? You're a rich man, but you know this is going to cost a billion and a half dollars. You surely don't want to throw all of that out on your own, are you considering having people donate money or not? Yeah, they, they do. They, I guess it's called Trump.com, but 
But, you know, I, I get it's so cute. I get a woman the other day. She sent me $7.11, which amounted to a percentage of her monthly something. A, a, an older woman, she said, Mr. Trump, I love you so much. This is That was a lot of money for her. And I got the check. I don't know. Somehow I see this check. But people are sending a lot of money in. And I don't, honestly, I don't want the money. One of the nice things, I think one of the reasons uh. I'm doing so well, you know, Bush has raised over $100 million from people. I know. I know all those people. They're friends of mine. A lot of them friends of mine. Some are interviews of mine. But I know them all. <laughs> Really powerful, smart, tough people. They don't give money like because it's a charity. They give money because they want something. When Bush has over a hundred million, when Hillary has over fifty million, everybody that gave millions of dollars is getting a lot for that. They're yeah, going to get all yeah. sorts of things. And in a lot of cases, it's very bad for the country. Good for them, good for their companies, but bad for the country. So you're willing to blow one and a half billion dollars of your own money to become president? Well, I'll, I'll be to see what happens. Number one, I'm doing really well so far. You know, I'm in, I'm, I guess they say I'm leading in all the polls. Let's see what happens. Okay, long, long way to go. Donald, we have very little time. What would you like to leave the audience with today on The Savage Nation? Well, we have to strengthen our military. We have to absolutely take care of our vets, Mike. Our vets are treated so badly, so horribly, it's ridiculous. And we have to get rid of Obamacare. I mean, there's so much to do. There's so much to do. And we have to do it quickly because we're not going to have much time if we keep going this way. It's not going to be you're not going to be able to bring it back. So we have to go. This is a very important election. This is maybe the most important election we've ever had. So you know, well, I hope I hope you're in it for the long haul. Donald, I really hope you're in it for the long haul. And as I said at the beginning, and I'll say it again, go, Donald, go. I support your candidacy. No one's going to get, you know, I love the purists, Donald, the popes of conservatism who say you're not really conservative. You're not this. You're too weak on that. You're almost conservative. You might be. And, you're, you know, to you, as a, the fact is no one's going to give them 100 percent of the pure vision they have for the George Washington that never existed. So as far as I'm concerned, you're the standard bearer. You're the only hope we have. You're the lion that we have been waiting for. You're the Winston Churchill of our time. Donald, thank you. Keep hitting him real hard. They need it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N in honor of the dead lion. Of course, I did it on Monday, and uh, those who mock animals and animal rights, now suddenly three days in a row, it's the animals, the, the lion's story. It's unbelievable, the cynicism. But if you want to believe that the Founding Fathers were all pristine and 100% pure, go ahead. Someone wrote this, and I didn't write it, about the dentist with the lion who I ripped. I said on Monday, I said on Monday the dentist should be released naked in the woods in, in the, in the, in the, on the savannah of Zimbabwe and hunted like the lion. Then I said he should be, he should be tried in Zimbabwe, found guilty, put in the Zimbabwe prison. That would go over well, white men in a Zimbabwe prison. Then he'd know it to be like hunted. But someone wrote this. They said if the dentist just said he was aborting the lion, then he would have gotten millions in federal dollars and praise from uh, Hollywood weird weirdos. Come on. That's terrible. Then someone wrote this, that it's sad what was done, but where is the outrage over Planned Parenthood and harvesting and selling organs? Beheadings and other atrocities being done by radical Islamists. The IRS missing servers. IRS being used to target political enemies. Shillery's missing emails regarding Benghazi. Failure of our government to call violence by radical Muslims, radical Islamic terrorism. Obama violating his constitutional duties. Congress violating its constitutional duties and so on. And we know that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife has no jurisdiction in Africa. It's nonsense. None whatsoever. He should be extradited back to Zimbabwe. That's if they even ask. But I don't think they're even going to ask because there's too much money in, in, uh, in hunting over there. It's a shame that the, that the people who are upset over the killing of this beautiful creature care nothing about the killing of Christians that is going on in the Middle East, the beheading of people in the Middle East by vermin who wrap themselves in the Quran, the mutilation of young Muslim girls who they rip out their sexual parts so they can never have sexual pleasure. You don't know anything about that or the reverends who pay no taxes, or setting people on fire in cages. Unbelievable to me. So this is what it's about. 
America has been so fundamentally transformed by Obama. You know, you could say that, well, okay, let's not go into Obama. Forget about it. I, I can't go into it. I don't want to talk about it now. 855-407-282. 855-407-SAVAGE. Dr. Palmer will be arrested here and sent to Zimbabwe to stand trial. Zimbabwe is an African nation that normally despises blah, blah, blah. Imagine how he will be treated by a Zimbabwean judge. Wow. I hope he's sent to a prison in Zimbabwe. See, they're not like American prisons. You don't get halal meals. You don't get kosher meals in Zimbabwe prisons. There's no medical care. You know what the medical care there is? A rusty razor blade. You get no blankets. I don't know what you do for food. You probably have to pay for your own food. That's where he belongs, the doctor. Maybe he could, I don't know, he could be a dentist to the prisoners. That would be that would be fitting. Unbelievable to me. Anyway, that's another big story. Cecil the Lion is a bigger story than the Nazis that planned the fantasize. Remember, uh, Palmer butchered one one animal. I planned and fantasized the girls butcher, uh, what, a thousand a day? A thousand fetuses a day? It's unbelievable. <laughs> okay, 855-407-28. We could talk about Donald Trump. We could talk about the lion. Dentistry. We, we could move to dentistry if you want. Do you know, but for the grace of God, I would have been a dentist, not a talk show host. You don't know that. When I was trying to decide what to be in college, at that age, you know, you don't know. I don't know. what. We came from kind of a poor immigrant family, so who do you know? You don't, you talk, the people who you look up to are your teachers. Those days you did. They were your mentors, teachers. The doctor who you saw was a, a pillar of the community. The religious figure, priest, the rabbi, those who you looked up to. Oh, God, if you only heard the stories that went on behind the scenes. So I remember uh, asking a doctor if I should be a psychiatrist. He, I think he came. My father was already had a heart attack. I was late in college, third year or something. So he's a nice young doctor. I said, "Do you?" Th I'm thinking. You know, you you wouldn't say should I. Kids act out. They think they are it already. That's why whenever a thug uh, is killed, the mother always cries and says, "My baby was going to be a, a brain surgeon. He didn't get out of the first grade, but he was on the way to medical school when he was trying to hold up a liquor store and killed by a cop." But nevertheless. So kids don't say, I would like to be. I said, um, I, I am going to be a psychiatrist. <laughs> I, I was only a junior in college. I was just trying it out on the doctor. So he says to me, why would you want to listen to people's problems for the rest of your life? That was the end of my psychiatric career. Then I found out that psychiatrists have, have the highest rate of suicide. I didn't know that. That's understandable because it's mostly people who have screwed up thing. Their minds are screwed up to begin with their lives or whatever. So they go into that, try to figure out what's wrong with themselves so they can heal others. That's true. And Freud wrote it better. It better went than that. Freud wrote that the psychiatrist should be the pure stream that absorbs the filth from the dirty stream of other people's minds. Did you hear that? That was so brilliant. But he, then he said there reaches a point where the pure stream gets so filled with dirt, the, the detritus from the other people's minds, that they get swamped by it. That's an interesting way to look at it, too. I don't know how therapists can take listening to people's garbage day in and day out, right? It's like we in talk radio, getting overwhelmed by what Obama's doing to this country and to us. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Okiero Bolognese. Yo quiero Bolognese, yo no quiero Martinada. How come some singers then, now, can cut through or cut, can cut through and get right to your heart? How is that possible? How is it some politicians can cut through everything and get to your heart and your soul and the, uh, the others can't? They don't even get out of the starting gate. It's the same in every walk of life. There are those who can cut through and get to your heart and there are those who can't. 
Trump has cut through the heart of America, into the heart of America, and he's reached the heart of America. That's the reality, and that's why the others are so bitter, because they can't. They know they're phonies, and they know what they're doing to the country. They're doing it on purpose, or on the Republican side, they're bitter, because no matter what they've spent, they haven't reached us. Yo no soy marinado. I love that. I'm not a sailor. I'm a captain. Soy capitan. Unbelievable. But I turned it into a joke. Yo no quiero marinara. Yo quiero bolognese. That's for the Italians in the audience who speak Spanish or the Spanish speakers who speak Italian. It's a joke. It's a little joke. I don't eat bolognese sauce. It's usually old meat. But uh, whatever was left over, they throw in a pot with some fat and call it uh, bolognese. Bolognese. The Americans call it Bolognese. Bolognese. Bologniza. Bolo it's a hard word, Bolognese. Took me a long time living in San Francisco to learn how to pronounce Bolognese. I feel like I'm a genius now in Italian. I, didn't, I don't even eat the sauce. I prefer puttanesca sauce, by the way. Do you know the origin of puttanesca sauce? Robert, do you know it? You're an intelligent young man. I shouldn't tell it. It's not, I think you have to be over 18 to understand it. Well, there's nothing dirty about it. Putanesca refers, it's a, it's a word for prostitute. Did you know that? In Italian. And it's not Italian slang. Putanesca means prostitute, I believe. So when you eat putanesca sauce, it's a very spicy sauce. Mainly red pepper and this and that. And the origin of, of uh, putanesca sauce, as I was told many years ago, uh, is that outside the Roman Colosseum, ladies of the night who uh, practiced that form of uh, making a living, uh, which was certainly more honorable than that of American politicians, after, you know, they finished their work, they would go in and have a very spicy sauce with a lot of hot spices in order to kill the, the so-called germs that they may have uh, contracted during their uh, enterprise. I don't know, maybe Boehner can have some uh, Putinesca sauce. Maybe then he won't cry on the golf course so much. Maybe then he will tell us why he can't play golf with Obama. Why don't we send him a jar of Putinesca sauce? No, that's not. And then I'll say, I did something wrong, the FBI. Over I didn't say do anything wrong with it. Don't send him sauce. 855 Of course, I replayed the Trump interview. We're talking about sauces, saucy. Iran, the bomb, illegal aliens from Mexico swamping America, the dentist. The dentist is a good story. Also, I, I, as I ended the hour, I told you how I almost became a psychiatrist. And I was junior year, father had a heart attack. Doctor would visit the house after he was out of the hospital. And I went, said to the young doctor, I'm going to be a psychiatrist. He said, why do you want to listen to uh, other people's problems? That was the end of my psychiatric career. So then later on in the year, I, I, I said I would be a dentist to some other doctor. My poor father was getting EKGs in the house. God, it was a sad time. I had to leave college. I had to go to work in his store. People don't know that. I actually dropped out of college to run his store for a while. People try to rob me. I told you that story. Amazing how evil people are. My father warned me all my life as an immigrant how, how bad the world was. Boy, was he right. He said, man, everyone will try to get over on you, basically. And I was an idealist, and I didn't believe any of it. So he was, it was a tough customer because he came from a different world. You know, you come over here as an immigrant and you really see the, how hard life really is. You know, it's not a soft touch. So I told the doctor at that point or the next, yeah, the doctor, I want to be a dentist. He said, why do you want to look in people's dirty mouths the rest of your life? That was the end of my dental career. This is actually a funny joke because you can go down the line. Then I told him I wanted to be a lawyer. I never said that. I never, ever wanted to be a lawyer, ever, ever. I thought of working for the New York Sanitation Department, but I, I would do that before becoming a lawyer. At least that was more honorable. You clean sewers instead of cleaning people's pockets out. If I had the power, you know what I would do to class action lawyers? I would strip them of every penny they ever made. I would rip their children out of college. I'd take their grandmothers out of old age homes. I would take their assets going up to the third generation. I'd send them to Zimbabwe to be bait for lions. That's what I think of class action lawyers. They are the scum of the earth, the lowest, the vermin. The vermin of, vermin of society. Ask yourself why we have out-of-control lawyers in, in, in the class action business. Ask, ask yourself what they do. They attack legitimate companies and try to take them apart. They're worse than ISIS. Class action lawyers are worse than ISIS. Why do I say it? Because ISIS really can't harm us. Class action lawyers harm businesses every day of the week. 
If I have to look at one more ad on Fox News for another group of class action gangsters, I don't know what I'm going to do. What a bunch of sick people. I love their children. Oh, my father's an attorney. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to go work. You ought to go for, take a job outside of the Roman Coliseum selling jars of Putinesca sauce to make up for what your father did. 855-472-82. How did I get into that? See, I run with the I run with the free association. That can be a problem sometimes. Or it releases. It's like a, it releases the, the the hiss. The hiss comes out of the the pressure. It's like tss, lets it out of my soul. I would have been dead thirty years ago without radio. I'm thinking when I first went into radio. It's summer. Give me a break. It's the end of July already. We had Trump on. We did politics. We did the lion. We did the the plan. The infanticide. What do you want me to do about it? They own the pimps in Congress. Pardon me. I use the exact right word. The Democrats are Nazis. Do you know what Barbara Boxer said? That foul-mouthed Brooklynite, that fraud, that killing infants saves lives? Barbara Boxer. Attention, the Boxer family. I can't say it on the radio. Killing infants. Infants, helpless little infants. You know, this is something that Hitler would have, Hitler's minions would have said. That you're a, they did say it. Exactly what Boxer said is a duplicate of what the Third Reich said when they started killing handicapped people. You see, before they killed Jews, Barbara, they were killing the handicapped, and they said it was a humanitarian gesture to kill handicapped people because they would be suffering their whole life, Barbara. Now, I don't think you'd agree with that, but you say that taking helpless fetuses and selling their body parts is beneficial to mankind. You are a disgrace to the human race. How you could ever walk into a Jewish temple again, Barbara Boxer. Well, I wouldn't say it's beyond me. I know the temples you go to. I know birds of a feather flock together. Did that get to you? I hope so. Go ahead. See what you can do to me. See, see what you can do to me, Barbara. You are a disgrace. What a wreckage you are to the human species. I love, what I love about this is we were, we were told in 1994, the year of the woman, that when women entered Congress, it would be a kinder, gentler place. Look what we have wound up with. Diane Feinstein, double dealing from top to bottom, according to the LA Times. Years ago, they were onto it. Then they dropped the story. Nancy Pelosi, kinder and gentler. Barbara Boxer, kinder and gentler. Barbara Mikulski, kinder and gentler. My goodness, my goodness, women are really kinder and gentler. I'm off the sauce because I'm not eating uh, pasta. I'm not drinking anymore either. Once in a while, a beer. Awful, just terrible. Horrible. So I took an energy drink instead. I, was, I loved it. I felt 18 again. I could, everything looked good. Alcohol is a central nervous system. Depression, it's poison. I mean, the truth is. You know that Trump is, I think, the only candidate who doesn't drink and is not on drugs? Maybe that's why we, we like him. He definitely doesn't drink. I can guarantee you by the way he answers, he's not on medication. It's not the type. But you go down the list, I'm guessing now, the, the rest of them are on drugs and alcohol all the time. Whacked out of their minds on the golf course. That's why they break down in tears. Like, Boehner, tears. What's he crying so much? It's the mark of a medication in my estimation. How do I know for sure? How does a grown man weep in public office without hiding in shame and wears pink shirts and pink ties? That's all. What did I want to say to you? I, I was uh, moving in another direction. Not Trump, Churchill, not Lyon. I'm trying to like jump cut back to where I was going. I can't remember. Oh, alcohol, yeah. Think of that, 100 calories per drink at least, right? Now calories do count if you're on a diet. Start adding it up. I, when I was younger, I'd have five drinks a night. I told you that. I'm not hiding it. I was proud of it. I used to joke on this radio show in the 1990s that the AMA suggested that drinking in moderation was good for your health, and their idea of moderation was three ounces of alcohol a night or a day. So I said, well, the British Medical Society believes that five ounces of alcohol per night or per day, whatever it may be, is beneficial to your health. I said, I, I'm British in that regard. Actually, when you think about it, I was soon thereafter banned in Britain. I don't know if it had anything to do with that. But it wasn't unusual for me at the end of a show to go around North Beach, hang out in the cafes. I mean, to burn off steam, I would drink wine. So I, I never touched. 
I didn't touch hard liquor for 35 years. Do you know that? I wouldn't touch it. I dr strictly drank white wine, Sauvignon Blanc, when you could still drink it in California until it became sugar water. Oh, God, did they poison it. Around 15 years ago, they destroyed Sauvignon Blanc in the state. Destroyed it. They started to change the taste of wine in California to match the taste of young ladies who had grown up on 7-Up and Coca-Cola. And they liked soda pops. So they started to make all of the white wine started to become sweet. We could vomit from it. You can't drink a Chardonnay in California without getting a mig. The eye goes out. I smell the stuff across the restaurant. My eyes go out. I don't care what it costs. There's no such thing as good Chardonnay from California. If you, if you really know wine, you're not drinking Chardonnay. You're not drinking Sauvignon Blanc. You're drinking like a sugar wine. If you want a white wine, which I don't drink anymore at all, you have to go to a pure wine probably from France or Italy. That, that's my opinion. Like uh, uh, like uh, the, 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 Batard, the Batards or a Grand Cru Chablis. I don't, I don't want to get into wines right now. Then you'll say I'm a wine snob. I don't drink wine at all. I get a mug from it. So I, don't, so I don't drink wine. Don't drink vodka. I drink a beer. I can't stand beer either. It's bloating. It's true. It's like for an Eddie, like at a ball game. Hey, hey who's on first then? Take me out to the... No, I enjoy it, but it's like makes you it's just so fat. The roll, you can't wear anything anymore. Nothing fits. So it's no alcohol now, no gluten, no pasta, no bread, nothing. It's a nightmare. I feel like uh, the, the, the Nat Geo show, Naked and Afraid Every Day. I feel like I'm on the savannah. I don't know what I'm going to do to hunt for meat. Like It's impossible to shift your diet like this. I'm on protein and berries. But I, I hear, no, I'm, I'm talking health in a ram, rambling manner. I get it. Some people don't know what the heck I'm talking about. don't know what they're listening to. They're calling 911. They're suggesting that they run over to the radio station, have me arrested. There's a madman. They have no idea what true art is. They're so used to program guys like John Stewart that they think that's humor. Uh, a government stooge like him. What you're actually hearing is humor. What did I want to tell you? I forgot already. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. It's summer. Lighten up. Lighten up. The election's not until a year and a half. Most people don't even know what the election is. They don't know when it is. They don't know here. They don't know who's running. They don't know why it's running. They don't know if it counts. They don't know if they're going to vote. They have no idea when it is, where to vote, whether it matters. They don't know what a Democrat is. They don't know who Obama is. They have no idea what the president does. They don't know what the Constitution is. They don't know what a state is. So you're all excited because you think the world cares. I care, but I'm not going to kill myself now for 16 months or whatever's left. That's why I was talking about food. Oh, and I'm going to get to what I was getting at while I'm playing 58, 59 music. You know, I like uh, collector cars. So I have the, the Hellcat, which is now, it's a new car, but it's a collector car. 710 horsepower. It's like driving a volcano. Okay, rarely drive it. It's, it's beyond belief. That's like a car for Meekum in 20 years. Look at it in the garage. Like, you walk around the thing and you're like, what a car. So then I have... The 1970 Jaguar XKE, which I bought two years ago, rarely drive the poor thing. Sits there crying in the garage. But I finally bought something new. I bought a 19, 1961, 60 or 61 XK150, like a stunner, black with red leather, like a new job. Just got it in the garage yesterday morning. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But I want to go to Putinesca sauce because it's not connected at all. There's no, no relationship between Putinesca sauce and what I'm about to tell you about collector cars. Angela on KBET, go ahead quickly. You say there's a different take on what? You had mentioned Putinesca sauce, and the reason I'm calling is because I am fluent. One of the languages I'm fluent in is Italian. The word putana, P-U-T-T-A-N-A, is the word for prostitute. And the esca, E-S-C-A, is added as a flowery suffix to use to make this unappealing word a little more appealing be because of its use, the sauce. All right, so that's what I said. It's prostitute sauce. Yeah, I'm, I'm not correcting you. I'm just simply confirming to you because you were questioning it. Ah, okay. Well, there are different theories on the origins of puta sauce or putanesca sauce. And one theory that I'm reading about is that decent married women would see the ladies of the night walking on the streets below their balconies, and they would... Uh, 
throw the sauce down on them made of leftovers from the balconies screaming, putana, putana. And that would include uh, anchovy, olives, and capers. Who knows what's true? Do you do you like puttanesca sauce or not? Um, I do. Of course, like everything else, it depends on who makes it. But in general, yes. That's like right. That's right. And what's in it? It's always about the ingredients anyway. The ingredients are everything. We don't know where the anchovies come from. An olive, yes. A caper, yes. Capers are weird. Fr- it's a weird thing. What is that? I know what it is, but it's like, why is it? What is a caper? It's like a bank robbery? What is a caper? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Do you mind that I'm goofing around? It's August already, another another day or so. It's August already. Most normal people are somewhere. I don't know where they are, on a boat somewhere or a mountain. I don't know what they're doing. I was invited on a yacht to go away in August. It's sad. I'm not going to go. You know how far that is? Everyone's on a yacht, all the rich people. They're in Cannes, they're in Nice, they're walking, they're eating, they're enjoying, they're drinking, they're conversing. It's like a death sentence for me. First of all, I live on the West Coast, as you know. That's a six-hour job from here to the East Coast. That's a fiver, five-and-a-halfer, okay? All right, you can fly nonstop. I get a Gulfstream 650, but I don't have one. That's 14 hours or something. But let's say you go to New York first or whatever. Stay the night, you have a meal, then you like dread the next day, airport, six more hours. You can't fly into southern France direct, so you have to, uh, I think you, you can fly Air France to, to Nice, I'm not sure. Then you got to go to the boat, then you get on the boat, and it looks good. The first you know, couple of hours on anything new is like, holy God, is this gorgeous. You're high on it, you drink the wine, the crew smiles, you get the white wine. I happen to... I love Gavi de Gavi. I love the black label Gavi de Gavi, by the way. Zero hangover. It's the only thing I can drink is Italian. I like Italian whites, except the trick wine from some of the areas. But Gavi de Gavi, I don't, regular Gavi is not good. Gavi de Gavi is great. I recommend it. They don't advertise. I don't know who they are. I don't know. It's Mr. Alfredo himself. Who, whatever. Not everything has to be tied to a monetary thing. Then what do I do with myself? What am I going to do on a boat for 10 days? I don't understand it. I will gain, all I'm doing is stare at like wine and food. What's the good of it? So that's it. I know my diet's going to be over. I, I've been on it a week. I can't take it. I'm looking at the menus next to the puttanesca thing, Italian meatballs. I'm salivating. Sausage and pasta. I'm dying already. I'm just looking at the names. Shrimp pasta, marinara. Uh, I, I can't take it. I mean, it's almost worth just looking like flat, fat clemenza. I'm just going to go off the diet, I think. So what if I'm fat? What, the undertaker's going to notice the difference? What are we obsessed with this thinness? When, where was it written that being skinny is it's equal? See, this is the obsession with America, that being thin is equal to being moral or ethical. You know, where, where does that come from? Like if you're fat, you're indulgent, or if you're overweight, you're indulgent, or if you're overweight, you're a bad person? How stupid can a country get? Take a look at the guys in the Middle East, the, the guts on them, the Iraqis. They, they're not stupid. They wear those... Dirty night shirts for a reason. They don't wear a belt. That every minute they look at my a 41, a 42, a 39, a 46. They go insane like most Americans with a scale and a belt. So they wear a burqa, a dirty night shirt, a male burqa. You don't even know what they weigh. They have, not, there's not a scale in the Middle East, I hear. Scales are not permitted to, to cross the Tigris. <laughs> if I'm laughing at my own jokes, either I'm desperate or I'm funny. Whatever the answer is, I don't care. I'm having a good time. Am I not allowed to have a good time just because it's work? Cynthia on WABC, welcome to the program. Uh, how's my driving? It's great. Don't ever doubt yourself, Michael. You have got an audience that doesn't stop. I'm here in Pelham, New York, sitting in my car. It's raining like a cats and dogs outside. I'm even answering you. You speak, you have questions. And you say things like, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm saying, yes, I do, I do. Well, is, it not- raining in, is it raining in New York City right now? So it'll wash away the urine from the bums and the fecal matter that's a result of de Blasio's uh, hands-off policy by the police? The city has become a dirt cesspool now under him, the communists, but the newspapers won't, won't report it. <laughs> I know, you got that right. They got bums peeing in the street, defecating in the street, beating people up, and that psychopath... That lover of Karl Marx does nothing. Tells the police not to touch him. 
No, it's unbelievable. Doesn't make it, though, outside the west of the Hudson for the yokels. That's all. W, what's this? KKOB. Where is that? I forgot where it is. Is that Reno? The big New Mexico? I'm in New Mexico. Karen, welcome to the Savage Nation. I got mixed up for a minute. Are you in New Mexico on KKOB? Uh huh. Yeah, I'm in New Mexico. Is it really New Mexico now, or is it just called Mexico? It depends on who you are. It's New Mexico okay. still. So what's on your mind in New Mexico? So I wanted to say, since the big event of my life, my marriage, already happened 20 years ago, the next big event is going to be my funeral, and I want you to go. Oh, wait a minute. In your place? No, just come to my funeral. You make me laugh so hard every day. You have to come to my funeral. That's very nice of you. I don't, I'm so honored. I'm speechless. Yeah, so we need to keep in touch. And if I oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's a quite an invitation. I'm going to put that down on my calendar. Do you happen to know the date and time? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good line. That's funny. So come, okay? No, I am. A, I, am I, I spent $20. Do you know that I'm an actual uh, reverend or something? Are a you? clergy. I'm a member of the clergy. 20 bucks. I got a tag that I could put on my uh, lapel. I got a card. It's like a, a thing you, you send $20. I, do you know that I can marry people in California? There's, there's no rules on it. Virtually anyone, even a lay priest, can marry people in this state. I think I could lay people to rest. I, you know, that's, it's an interesting question because we all have to face that at, at some point. How about a funeral at sea? Would you consider that ashes strewn at sea? Oh, I'm Catholic. No, you don't do that. Oh, you, you go for the whole thing, the six foot under? I am, yeah. Uh huh. With the with the straps and the shovel and the flowers. Oh, the god, the thought of it. You could do ashes. You just can't throw them anywhere. Oh, I can't take it. I got a brother in the ground, a mother, a father. I just, I can't deal with it. The the, the shoveling and the dirt. I got a migraine. Thanks, thanks for the. No, I, my right eye just went out. I suffer migraines now. I got a complete nausea attack from that call. Complete fear attack because I remember my mother. Sad day. Very sad day. I can't give certain things away. No, I don't want to make a mockery of it, but there's one thing about that that I'll never forget. It's kind of, it's, there's a pathos to it. And not doing it for effect, but I'll put it in a way that if the individual is listening, he knows I'm not insulting him. As my mom was laid to rest, which is about the most traumatic thing next to laying a child to rest, as you know, there was a man at the funeral who I didn't know very well, but he was related to a, relator, a relative who had lost a son in an accident and it you know, must have ripped his guts out. Well, he shoveled the first earth, uh, the first shovel full of earth down into the thing. The look on his face, if I was an artist, I would have captured the anger and the rage and the compassion that this man, he was a big man, a strong man, the anger and the rage and the compassion he had for, for that situation was all in that shovel full. I wish I were an artist and could have captured it. I mean, I could only capture it, you know, as I did for you just now, just the face of the man, the anguish, H horrible. So if you can't have a laugh along the way, I mean, what are you gonna have? And here we face the most murderous scum on the planet since Adolf Hitler. And they threatened to do it to all of us. And this bum who runs America, this bum ice skates over the world like nothing, nothing, nothing bothers him. To him, it's all about beating his domestic enemies, that's all. This bum, this bum in the White House does nothing against them. Jordan is begging for help. Egypt is begging for help. And this fellow traveler does nothing. Okay. Eight, I, I don't want to go there. Oh, please don't. I'm getting weight loss calls now. Come on. Please, can you take that off the people giving me advice? I know how to lose weight. Very simple. You know, push yourself away from the table and eat less. It's real simple. But I want to just tell you about cars for a minute. One of the reasons at night, I like to watch certain TV. Um, you, will, you know, Ray Donovan, eh, I'm not that enamored of it anymore. I don't know. This played itself out for me. True Detective is somewhat better. So big deal, it's once a week. I tend to watch boxing, Showtime boxing. I love to watch the Mexicans box. They're amazing. I look at these guys and I realize they come from the toughest neighborhoods in the world. And you can see how tough these kids are. It's awesome. 
at, at one punch from any of these guys to a normal man, you're dead. Average person dies from one punch. These guys get hit 150 times in a boxing match. You ask yourself, how could a human being be that strong, right? The punishment that they, that they inflict on each other. And it's so macho, it's unbelievable to me to watch it. So it's inspiring to look at it, to see this. It's awesome. Because let's put the immigration thing uh, on hold for a minute. Think of the lifeblood. Think of the virility coming into this country. It's tremendous virility. You don't think about that. Tremendous machismo. Tremendous virility. I didn't comment on immigration. I talked about that. That's something you should never, never forget what I just said to you. In a weak nation filled with weaklings, except those in the police work or military and here and there, we're a weak nation filled with just weaklings, weakling men like John Boehner. Think about that. Pathetic. I mean, just what we need is so much machismo. That's what we need right now to save us from the feminists and the crazies and the and the and, the, and, and, and ISIS. Okay, so I watched that, and I shift from boxing to car shows on Channel Seven Fifty Four over here. I don't even know what it was. All sorts of different shows. And there's one show where they fix cars. They take it apart. They remove it from the frame, and they sandblast it. And they all have like rings in their nose and tattoos and. It's an amazing show what they can do with sheet metal workers and electrical. So it's an amazing, I just like to watch them rebuild things. It's wonderful to watch all of these guys with these skills. Then there's a show collecting classic cars. I don't like it that much. This guy Wayne, there's something about him. If he only got a new pair of pants, I could watch it. Why does a guy who has a successful show on, on cars wear old dirty dungarees everywhere? What, what's with him? Can't someone teach him to get a new pair of pants to go with the show? You're looking at a $3 million Mercedes. The guy wears a dirty pair of, uh, of dungarees. What is with that act? Can't someone say, look, you, you have a hit right now. Get a pair of pants. And then he walks hunched over. I don't like his walk. I can't get into it. He walks like a crab. But the cars are amazing. So anyway, I watch those shows and a few others. Maybe a home, uh, the moving shows. There's a couple of shows like House Hunters, House Hunters. A couple from St. Louis is looking for a new house in Belize. You know, that kind of thing. It's like, I wouldn't live there. They gave it to me for free, Belize. But, you know, all right. And they walk into such houses you could die from. But they're young. You know, they're just starting out. Oh, look at that molding. My God, it's beautiful. Oh, I love the fireplace. I'm, I'm cringing. <clears throat> then I shift to another car show, back to boxing, whatever. I scan. I scan. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Oh, so I'm just trying to say, so I like cars. I've always liked cars since I've been a kid. Way back when I was a kid, I was car crazy. First car, 1957, Oldsmobile, two-door salesman's model. Father bought it for me. Never forget, as long as I live, I'm going to do a car thing. Take me two minutes. First car to a, to a young kid is like first love. But we won't go into first love. I did that another time. That was loved by the sewer plant, but I won't go into that one. The first car is the something you never forget. It was a, a rainy night in New York on Utopia Parkway, attached houses. My father brought home the car, a green, dark green, like, like military green, a 57 Oldsmobile two-door salesman's car. It was like ugly, I mean, you know, but I loved it. It was mine. And we sat in the car, didn't start the engine, on the street in the rain and talked. So it's one of the most serene moments of my whole life. Beautiful. I remember to this day, the raindrops falling on the windshield. I can still see it. Next car. Chrysler, New Yorker. Like family car. Four-door, but it had a Hemi engine. That's an interesting story. I'll go down the cars. Then I, then I was Jaguar crazy. I had an XK150, the worst piece of garbage I ever had. Uh, it got locked in first gear uh, on, on 3rd Avenue. I had to leave it overnight in Manhattan. That was a, a disaster. I got it started, drove it to Queens, to an auto dealer in Long Island City. I sold it to him for $850. <laughs> I knew I was giving it away. I didn't care. Take it. He looked at me like I was crazy. Just get it off my hands. It was like maroon. It was unbelievable. Gore. So I just bought one, another XK150 but in L.A. But this car is beautiful. This is restored, perfect. The leather, the this, the engine has ceramic uh, downpipes on it. Superb. Unbelievable. So I just put it in the garage next to the XKE. It's like, they're like, they're like brothers, like two sisters really sitting in the garage together. She looked over like, wow, where'd you come from? 
So who's older? She's older than him. But the uh, the new one's actually in a way prettier. They say the XK is a better looking car, but it's th the XK one hundred and fifty is like thinner, thin tires. The, the XK is no comparison in the handling. But it's a fun thing, cars, because why do you think I watch these shows? Because it gets your mind off where we are in time today. Do you understand that? Why do you think Meekum Auctions and all of these places are doing so well? People want to go back. Why do you think cars from the 50s and 60s are so popular in America? Because people want to forget what the progressives have done to this world. You get it? Okay, I'm out of time. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. One further note on Donald Trump for all of you haters on the left. Donald Trump, when he bought Mar-a-Lago from the post family he opened that club to blacks and jews but you don't want to hear that you want to paint them as what he is and just as you've tried to destroy me and and failed 21 years i put up with you liars you're all nowhere no one knows you you sit at home on medication and pajamas sending out these stupid emails you're going to get nowhere the time is coming that you're going to be in the dustbin of history just because you have someone in the white house who hates america doesn't mean that america hates itself Trump opened his club to blacks and Jews. That's why when I said to Donald Trump yesterday, you're the Winston Churchill of our time, it touched such a raw nerve. It was picked up by many different sites, okay? The first to pick it up was the Daily Caller. I saw that on Trump, on, on Drudge, on the Drudge Report. I don't know whether Trump's in it for the long run. No one knows what's going to happen. Maybe he doesn't know how long he's going to run. Nobody knows what tomorrow will bring, right? Do we really know? But when I said... Trump uh, Trump is the Winston Churchill of our time. It's quite an interesting statement, you know. What did I mean by it? I said Winston Churchill is back. You can mock it all you want. How else do you explain his popularity? You can say anything you want, but the people like him. Because they hate what Obama is doing to America. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Suitcase washes up near site of possible MH370 wreckage. Now, as you know, the Malaysian Airlines plane went down. They couldn't find a trace of it, right? And so many theories emerged. It was hijacked. It was taken to a secret island. The people are being turned into secret ISIS members. Remember all the theories? Crazy stuff. Uh, UFOs took it. It's on another planet. It went to Kepler-325. Suitcase washed up on a small island off Africa's east coast near the site where a sea-crusted wing part was discovered. Items that increasingly appear to be linked to long-missing Malaysian Airlines flight MH370. Found the wheel and pad like luggage on a beach on the French Indian Ocean island of Réunion. So it's pretty far away. Now, workers just found a six-foot-long piece of wreckage that appears to be a piece of a wing from the plane, which disappeared March 8, 2014, after taking over from Kuala Lumpur, bound for Beijing with 239 humans on it and a crew. So we're going to find out very soon. They're shipping the part to France to verify whether it came from flight MH370. This is a big story. Why? First of all, the plane went down very far away. So how could it be on off the coast of Africa? Because the location of this suitcase and the winglet, the wing part, is consistent with the drift analysis provided to the Malaysian investigation team, which showed a route from the southern Indian Ocean to Africa. That's very intriguing. 
Robert, have you found if there's a deep trench in that area in the Indian Ocean? You're emailing it to me now because my guess is by this, if this is a part of the aircraft and if that suitcase is part of the debris from the uh, aircraft that washed up, that, that, that crashed. All right, so where's the plane? It went into a deep trench, and I don't think they're ever going to get it. That's a huge story. I know it's not as important as ISIS and Jimmy Kimmel crying over a lion, I get it, or of Obama ripping off the taxpayers and, and having another vacation and lecturing the Africans on, uh, on uh, racism or Hillary dying in the polls or, or that, yeah, down the list, who cares? But it's an, it's an intriguing story because many of you jumped to the conclusion that ISIS took it and it was captured and they're brainwashed, they're being tortured. Who knows? Yeah, is there a deep trench? Let's see the email. Segment, no, no, I don't have it yet. Crackerjack team. By the time this segment is over, I'll have the research. I could do it in about eight seconds. I don't have the time, though. If I go, here's how I would Google. You know how quick I am at searches? You know about searching? Do you know it's all about how you load the search? You know that it's all an algorithm. Luckily, I'm trained in science. I know how to set words up to, to do searches. The search would simply be deep ocean Indian trenches in the Indian Ocean or Indian Ocean deep, o Indian ocean deep trenches. That's it. Comes up eight seconds, 23 million results. Google is amazing. I mean, you can't knock them. I don't like their politics. But the thing is, what a search engine. Who invented that thing? Did Al Gore invent that? Did Al Gore invent that with the Internet? Did he come up with Google on the side with global warming? The remains of the suitcase found in the area where a six-foot-long piece of plane wreckage was discovered. Does this matter you know? No. Mike, stick to Democrat, Republican. Tell us about Trump. That's all. Go back to basics. It's okay. I'm not afraid of the blackboard, blank board. I was never afraid of the blackboard. You give me a piece of chalk, I could go up to the blackboard and, in, and the audience would listen. You know, they say a writer is afraid of a blank page. I was never afraid of a blank page. I looked forward to writing. I'm looking at a, um, a call screening board, which has 10 lines. There's not one call right now. I blew you all away because I dropped the subject of politics and no one wants to call. You already shifted over to a uh, to banger, wall banger. I'm not talking about Planned Parenthood. I'm not talking about Trump. I'm not talking about Rand Paul. I'm not talking about Boehner. I'm not talking about Boxer. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Senator Boxer's remarks about the sale of baby parts is the closest thing to Hitler. Hitler's uh, speeches on the extermination of, of the handicapped I've ever seen in my life. I want you to listen to the most dehumanized woman in the history of politics in clip nine. We're not going to allow Republicans to undermine the vital research that is helping treatments for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, HIV, and birth defects. The research has led to public health breakthroughs, including vaccines for polio, chickenpox, rubella, and... Turn this monster off the show. For this, if there is a hell, and if there is a God in heaven, I do I have to finish the sentence? If there's a judgment day where either you go to heaven or you know where, this is where she goes the other way for what she just said. I have never in my life thought she would sink this low. I, know, I, always, knew she, I always knew that she was a low life. I knew it. I knew she was evil. But this I cannot believe. Justifying the, the dissection of Embryos and the sale of their body parts? Yeah, the year of the woman. You see, women bring us compassion when they come to Congress. She's owned lock, stock, and barrel by the abortion industry. The abortion racket keeps her in office, amongst others. I mean, I would expect Barbara Boxer to get up and talk about the wonders of Iran next. She could be on the payroll of the Ayatollahs next and say, anyone who puts down this deal is anti-American. It's a great deal that, uh, that the president got for us. We need a deal like this. This is preventing war. The president just stopped three world wars. The Iranians are a wonderful people. If there's a buck in it, the Boxer family, they're there. I would think. Astounding. And then uh, the lion now. Don't get me started. Don't get me started here. Public University wants to ban the word American. Did you see that story on, on my website, michaelsavage.com? I got to read it. Bias-free language guide claims the word American is problematic. This is not being made up. 
And where is that? The University of New Hampshire. Can you believe this? Has a bias-free language guide on its website, which is, quote, meant to invite inclusive excellence in the campus community. You know what the word inclusive means, don't you? Do you know where, where the word inclusive came from and who brought it into the popular dialogue? Terms such as American, homosexual, illegal alien, Caucasian, mothering, fathering, and foreigners are deemed problematic by the perverts on the campus of the University of New Hampshire. Update. Un University of New Hampshire President Mark Huddleston has disavowed the bias-free language guide, saying he is troubled by many things it contains. American illegal alien foreigners mothering and fathering you can't say those words on the campus. They're problematic other words that are problematic to the psychopathic left-wing fanatics include elders Senior citizen overweight speech impediment dumb Sexual preference manpower fresh men Mailman and chairman in addition to many others. Do you realize this the person who wrote this is a psychopath that belongs in a nuthouse in my day Creedmoor uh Massive medication, early days of, of, of uh, psychopharmacology, and never out of the out of the bug house ever. The guy defines words such as homosexual as problematic, and they offer a substitute called same gender loving. It's more inclusive. Instead of saying that guy is a, is a you know what you say, oh look at that guy, he's same gender loving. Uh, a lack of gender neutral bathrooms is according to the psychopaths cis centrism, whatever that means. Cis-centrism. I won't even read what they say. These are sick people. These are men. The guide says that American is problematic because it insults Mexicans and Canadians and uh, and such. They don't like the word illegal alien because it's it's insulting. And we should call them person seeking asylum. So in other words, the man who shot Kate uh, on on the uh, walkway in San Francisco was not an illegal alien from Mexico. He was a person seeking asylum or a refugee. He's still a murderer. Should be given the death penalty. Using the word Caucasian is also considered problematic in the UNH because of, for some reason. They say race is a, quote, social construct that was designed to maintain slavery, okay? Th this is insanity, you understand? Even saying the word healthy is problematic, the idiots say. I swear to God, listen to this, how sick they are. The preferred term for people without disabilities, the university says, is, quote, non-disabled. So, Robert, you're non-disabled. Similarly, saying handicapped or physically challenged is problematic. And so you're supposed to use words like wheelchair user or person who is wheelchair mobile. Using the words rich or poor is also, do you realize how sick these are? These are mentally insane people. Using the words rich or poor is also frowned upon. Instead of saying rich, the university encourages people to say person of material wealth. Instead of saying a person is poor, you're supposed to substitute person who lacks advantages that others have. Or low economic status related to a person's education, occupation, and income. Not that they're idiots or losers. Other terms considered problematic at UNH include elders, senior citizen, overweight, Speech impediment, dumb, sexual preference, manpower, freshman, mailman. Okay, this is all at a university. And they have a guide for uh, the students, the poor kids who come in. Okay, I'm not going to read anymore. It's like I just ate a little lunch. Can you believe what your colleges have become? So people on the blogs on the bottom started writing things that were insulting in one line. And they wrote things, let's see. I'd like all you foreigners and illegal aliens to know, when I was growing up, I received excellent mothering and fathering from my American parents. Some of the things I learned was to respect my elders and all senior citizens, whether they were Caucasian or not. We were never rich, but neither were we poor. My father made a good income. There were just a lot of us in the family, so we wore hand-me-downs until we were old enough to buy our own clothes. I don't know if our mailman was overweight <laughs> or what his sexual preference was or if he had a speech impediment, but I do know he delivered our mail. <laughs> Some of the bloggers are very smart. <clears throat> Imbeciles, idiots. Or they're probably dumb, overweight, illegal alien foreigners with speech impediments who have a sexual preference for freshmen. I think that would be an insult to real morons. To find there's a person with a mental age in adulthood or between 8 and 12 on the Benet scale. We could call them an ignoramus. 
named after the ignorant lawyer Ignoramus, the titular character in the 1615 play Ignoramus by the English playwright George Ruggle. I like that, Ignoramus. It's named for a person. Wow. All of these words in one... Could you make up one sentence using all of these forbidden words? Ah, uh, here's someone wrote this in. Caucasian Americans resent illegal alien foreigners, mothering or fathering homosexuals, but dumb, overweight, elder senior citizens have a sexual preference for freshman mailmen with speech impairment. <laughs> it's funny. It's very funny, all this stuff. I swear to God. <laughs> I never saw anything like what's going on in the colleges. I look back on my life. I'm so lucky that I was banned from the universities despite my great credentials and all the books I wrote. I, they saved me from, from probably killing somebody. KBOI Radio, line number two. Go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes, I have uh, three, three things I would like to make a point of. One was uh, earlier when you told Teddy to, uh, to shut up from barking. I was agreeing with you, and I thought, well, Teddy's agreeing with you, too. Um, I, Dr. Sampson, I have to tell you, you, you need to donate your brain to science when you're done. I don't know how you <laughs> That's horrible. I'm dead serious, man. I've, I've started out listening to these talk shows, and that nitwit, and I'm not going to say his name. Uh, he's all, all about himself and his karate and crap. I, I get so sick of those people. And I, if, if you're not on, I just turn the, the freaking radio off. And I Wait a minute. I, who, who, who boasts about his karate? You can tell the name. I want to hear this. You do. Yes. I didn't, know if it was, I didn't know if it was good etiquette or not, but Sean Hannity, he's a nitwit. He, I, he, he now he, boasts about he boasts about karate. Yeah, he talks about how he's martial art this and how he. Oh, he's full, of, he's full of he's full of he's full of beans. He's full of corned beef and cabbage martial arts. When did he be, when did he pick that up in between the TV and radio shows? I, when was he practicing in between radio, television, and being a slumlord in Atlanta? Stumbled onto you one evening when I was coming. Ah, oh, come on, that guy, uh, you know, is way past his prime. I hope he runs for office. He's fit to be a U.S. senator in Florida. That's about what he's perfect for. You know, he throws that malarkey pretty good. I love that you love this show. I do. And by the way, every one of us has their own following with some crossover. So we have to be nice to each other, or we get complaints. But that's ridiculous, boasting about his karate. Any man who boasts about being a martial artist is a pushover. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. Let's go to the callers. W-A-L-G Radio, Ron. Welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hello, Dr. Savage. I was wondering uh, what your thoughts were. When I was a child, I had a, a typical fictional fantasy of what it would have been like to be suddenly transported in some point of time in our past history. And equally, I also thought it would be very interesting to suddenly be transported to a time in the future, say 100 years, 200 years, or, or whatever. Uh, but now that I've gotten older, I'm about 90%, 10%, and that it would definitely be the past and not the future, because I'm afraid that uh, this, this, the future is of absolute no interest to me whatsoever anymore. You Wait, wait, so you're saying you're pessimistic about a future at all? Well, that's part of it, I, and yes, I am very pessimistic, but I mean, in 100, 200 years, it's almost frightening to think of what this world will have become when we... Well, yeah, okay, if, you, if you're asking me what I can project 100 years from now pure off the top of my head, not having thought about it. The first thing I will say is this, that unless the cancer of radical Islam is stopped, we will enter a thousand or more years of pure unadulterated darkness where women are treated worse than animals, homosexuals are killed, there is no personal freedom, and people live in slavery. And so when we have a fellow traveler like Obama in the White House who will not lift a finger to stop ISIS, you have to ask yourself why. Then when you have a drunk like Boehner who says nothing about radical Islam, you have to ask yourself why. So the number one threat to the survival of mankind is not global warming, it's global Islamism. 
and we're doing almost nothing about it except bringing many, many Muslims into America who have never, ever been vetted for their ties to terrorism. Thank you, Democrat Socialists. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. I can't believe I just stumbled on another story. It says, patience pays off for $70 million Powerball winners. I don't play the lottery. I don't play Powerball. But you know, you won't believe this. I swear, I swear on Boehner's life that in my hand I have six numbers. I dreamed these numbers a long time ago. They fell out of one of my notebooks Monday night. I meant to bet on it. If I find out that I didn't bet it in the one, I may have to do it in my, harm myself on air. Is it a six number thing, Robert? How many number? Oh no! Stop it! I'm gonna I'm gonna die if this is the right number. My assistant's here. I just found it. It was a sheet of paper. Okay, we talk about Trump intuition, gluten, dog care, lions. I love guys who are a anti animals and mock animals all their life. Whoa, I eat animals. Whoa, I eat animals. Now suddenly they love lions. I love. Don't you love it? How cynical! People without children are suddenly anti-abortion. I just love this. How cynical can the world be? We have a soundbite. This is clip 27. Is John Boehner on why he cannot golf with the destroyer of the free world. Listen to 27. Trying to find common ground between the left and the right uh, is more difficult. There's no question about it. If I get on to see President Obama, the right begins to wonder what I'm up to. The left begins to wonder what the president's up to. You know, the president's suggested, hey, you think it's too much trouble if we play golfing, man? And I have to look at him and say, yes. Because uh, it, it just, everybody gets... Uh, bent out of shape. Bent out of shape, worried about what we're up to. Uh, when all we're really going to do is play golf. All we want to do is play golf. You loser, you. You disgusting loser, you. You're playing golf while the world burns. You're playing golf while the destroyer of the free world is giving Iran a nuclear weapon. You're playing golf while babies are being sold for their body parts. You loser, you. You low-life Midwestern... I don't want to go on and on. That was Boehner on why he can't golf with the destroyer of the free world. Romney's worse. Actually, they're cut from the same cloth. Romney is, is the same as Boehner. They're cut from the same Republican cloth. Who called them country club Republicans? Not me. People before me. Who called them check pants Republicans? I did. They are useless old white men who are terrified of their own shadow. They have made America weak. They have destroyed our standing in the world. They have caved into the destroyer of the free world. Today, everyone wants to talk about what I said yesterday, which is that I call Trump the Churchill of our times. That got the attention of the media. Michael Savage says Trump is the Winston Churchill of our time. Now, some people understood what I was saying, and they agreed with me. Newsmax got it, World Net Daily got it. Of course, the Daily Caller ran it first, but they didn't get it. They made a mockery of Donald Trump. They said he's not classy enough to be Winston Churchill, uh, which is which is kind of stupid. Because although Winston Churchill was a great orator and a great writer, you don't know much about Char Churchill's background. But if you remember the movie Gallipoli, Gallipoli, well, Gallipoli is actually a geographic locale in the Bosphorus where British troops were led by Winston Churchill to their death over and over again to Turkish machine guns. So Churchill was actually a very poor leader in World War I, but a very great leader in World War II. So no one is perfect in plain English. Do you get it? This is the same problem we have with thin people in radio, people who have no knowledge, monodimensional, one-string banjos, who keep referring to the founding fathers as though they were perfect people. And this leads us to the problem with the Republican Party today and the so-called conservatives who keep wanting someone who doesn't exist. There is no perfect person. There's no perfect leader. You're never going to get this perfect leader, ever. So when I said on the interview yesterday with Donald Trump, I, I don't know the exact words. I'll have to find them. I don't want to misquote my own, myself because I'm liable to have to sue myself for a retraction. <laughs> I don't want to have to get my lawyer to sue Michaels <laughs> for retraction. It was in the Newsmax, and they got it exactly. I said, you're a rich man, but you know this is going to cost a billion and a half dollars. 
Savage said of how Trump would finance his own campaign. You surely don't want to throw all of that out on your own. Are you considering having people donate money or not? And then he responded. I asked if he would establish strict voter ID laws through an executive order. That was the first question I asked. And then I cut him off because I realized if he answered it, he'd be crucified by the vermin in the media. I mean the liberals in the media. I mean the phonies in the media. Then we talked about the Iran nuclear deal. Savage pledged his support and declared, you're the lion, you're the Winston Churchill of our time, keep hitting them real hard. Question for the audience, in what, in what way is Donald Trump the Churchill of our time? Because Churchill wasn't even the Churchill of his time in terms of reality. Once you lionize someone, as many thin people in the media do about the founding fathers, like somehow they're godly. How could a founding father be godly? He was just a man with a musket. I love people, oh, he was so different than us. They put their life on the line. A, slaveholders. B, uh, let's see, what else? The Whiskey Rebellion, where they got a larger army against American citizens who didn't want to pay taxes on whiskey after the Revolutionary War. They were people. They were politicians, just like we have today. Some of them were better. Some were brighter. But please don't glorify anyone and tell me that Someone is this, someone is that. They're not better than us. They're not worse than us. There are better people or worse people in every generation. That's what I'm trying to say. So everyone's attacking Trump except those of us who know he's the only chance we have. He's the standard bearer of the American conservative movement. That's the reality. I know he's not perfect. I know he doesn't pass the, the litmus test of the, you know, the, the true constitutional conservatives for whom nobody is good enough. The popes of the conservative movement have said he doesn't meet the, uh, the the qualifications to represent them. Well, who does? Who does? Where is he? What do you think, George Washington is going to come back with wooden teeth on a white horse? You know, he's the best we got right now. And the best evidence I have that he's the real McCoy is that the Koch brothers have frozen out Donald Trump. They've stiffed on him, and they won't let him build a professional campaign operation. Why? Why are the Koch brothers freezing out Donald Trump from their influential political operation. Why are they denying him access to their state-of-the-art data and refusing to let him speak to the gatherings of grassroots activists or major donors? Why is Michael Savage allowing Donald Trump to speak to my gatherings of grassroots roots activists and, and donors? And that's another issue, you know. He, why has he not set up a donation page? But whatever he's worth, this is gonna cost him a billion dollars at least. A billion, a billion and a half. That's my number. I think the price of a Senate seat now is two hundred million dollars. That's the cost to buy a seat in the in the uh, in the in the circus called the Senate. About two hundred million dollars to buy a major Senate seat in a major city. The last I checked, that's what it costs. I think for Feinstein seat is about two hundred mil. So I'm guessing it costs about a bill, a billion, a billion and a half to be a president. That's the price of a seat in the White House today. And why is Trump so popular? Is it simply because he went to the border and he said? that we have a problem with illegal immigration. He didn't say all Mexicans are rapists. You know that. You know he didn't say that. I know the quote because I have it. He said some of them are, and it's true. It's true, for God's sakes. The Mexicans themselves were afraid of them. So we don't, oh, they're all coming into work and they're all sterling citizens. Do you understand what's going on in this country? And now Obama's bringing in Syrian Muslims along with Muslims from Somalia, unvetted. Somali... Muslims are being brought in, becoming street gang members. One sheriff in America said something about Somalis two years ago. The sheriff, the excuse me, the the uh, police chief of San Francisco about two years ago dared say that he's worried about Somali refugees being brought to America, mainly San Francisco, because many of them are rec being recruited into ISIS. They almost threw him out of his job. Two days later, we read the FBI is worried about the very same thing. So the answer is, we've got to do something. The problem is out of control. Obama has destroyed our borders, our language, and our culture. Somebody has to stand up to him. Somebody has to stand up to the, uh, the flood. Somebody has to do it. And we're hoping that Trump is for real. We are hoping so. And the best evidence that he is for real is that the Koch brothers uh, are against him. Now, why are they against him? McCall has said, well, they're in the business of caring for the illegal aliens. They're building the centers. But there's something else you should know about them that's really pretty amazing. Are you ready for this? Well, they're into prison reform. It's interesting. Why are they into prison reform? 
That's interesting. Who isn't for prison reform? Well, Obama is. But does Coke Industries, do they have private prisons? I'd like to know that. The Cokes say they're concerned about mass incarceration, too many criminal laws, a system that disproportionately weighs on the poor and minorities, and that they're going to focus on criminal justice reform. Well, that sounds noble. That's very noble of them. The overcriminalization in America, that is a problem. We have too many people in prison. There's no question about it. I've said that for years. I don't disagree with that. What are the Koch brothers into? I mean, they're into immigration reform. I know that. So they're into amnesty. But why? Why are they into amnesty? And that, that would explain why they're opposed to Trump. There's some good news for you out there, uh, those of you who think the world is coming to an end because of the mass hysteria created by Al Gore and the gangsters in the climate um, business. The, Prince Charles extends climate doomsday deadline by 33 years. I'm not making this up. He's always been an idiot. Prince Charles is warning that there are only 35 years left to save the planet from climate disaster, which represents a 33-year extension of his previous deadline. And now he's giving us a reprieve. He extends the 100-month climate tipping point to 35 more years, says the Tuesday deadline on the Climate Depot website. Can you believe this man? He gave us a reprieve. Prince of Wales said in a speech in Rio de Janeiro uh, back then that the best projections tell us that we have less than 100 months to alter our behavior before we risk catastrophic climate change. And he predicted that the Earth only had 96 months left to avoid, quote, irretrievable climate and ecosystem collapse and all that goes with it. Well, Jerry Brown just said the same thing in Italy. I guess he was reading an old speech from the prince as Jerry Brown flew there on a private jet and went to his air-conditioned limousine. What a bunch of liars. By the way, the global mean temperature has not increased for more than 18 years, a phenomenon referred to by scientists as the pause. Can you believe this? This is how far... We have fallen as a nation, that you have gangsters posing as scientists who are simply in it for the, for the federal money, the gravy, gravy train. So I'm giving you good news. Prince Charles has just extended the climate doomsday deadline that he gave by 33 years. So you can all breathe easily. We have 33 years left before we all die. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. How is it some politicians can cut through everything and get to your heart and your soul, and the, uh, the others can't? They don't even get out of the starting gate. It's the same in every walk of life. There are those who can cut through and get to your heart, and there are those who can't. Trump has cut through the heart of America, into the heart of America, and he's reached the heart of America. That's the reality, and that's why the others are so bitter, because they can't. They know they're phonies, and they know what they're doing to the country. They're doing it on purpose, or on the Republican side, they're bitter, because no matter what they've spent, they haven't reached us. Yo no soy marinado. I love that. I'm not a sailor. I'm a captain. Soy capitan. Unbelievable. But I turned it into a joke. Yo no quiero marinara. Yo quiero bolognese. That's for the Italians in the audience who speak Spanish, or the Spanish speakers who speak Italian. It's a joke. It's a little joke. I don't eat Bolognese sauce. It's usually old meat, but uh, whatever was left over, they throw in a pot with some fat and call it uh, Bolognese. Bolognese. The Americans call it Bolognese. Bolognese. Bologniza. Bolo it's a hard word, Bolognese. Took me a long time living in San Francisco to learn how to pronounce Bolognese. I feel like I'm a genius now in Italian. I don't, even, I don't even eat the sauce. I prefer puttanesca sauce, by the way. You know the origin of puttanesca sauce? Well, there's nothing dirty about it. Puttanesca refers, it's a, it's a word for prostitute. Did you know that? In Italian. And it's not Italian slang. Puttanesca means prostitute, I believe. So when you eat puttanesca sauce, it's a very spicy sauce. Mainly red pepper and this and that. And the origin of uh, puttanesca sauce, as I was told many years ago, is that outside the Roman Colosseum, ladies of the night who uh, practiced that form of uh, making a living, uh, which was certainly more honorable than that of American politicians, after, you know, they finished their work, they would go in and have a very spicy sauce with a lot of hot spices in order to kill the so-called germs that they may have contracted during their uh, enterprise. I don't know, maybe Boehner can have some uh, Putinesca sauce. 
Maybe then he won't cry on the golf course so much. Maybe then he won't tell us why he can't play golf with Obama. So I replayed the Trump interview. We're talking about sources, saucy. Iran, the bomb, illegal aliens from Mexico swamping America, the dentist. I told you how I almost became a psychiatrist and I was junior year father, I had a heart attack doctor would visit the house after he was out of the hospital and I went, said to the young doctor, I'm gonna be a psychiatrist. He said, why do you wanna to listen to uh, other people's problems? That was the end of my psychiatric career. So then later on in the year, I, I, I said I would be a dentist to some other doctor. My poor father was getting EKGs in the house. God, it was a sad time. I had to leave college, I had to go to work in his store. People don't know that. I actually dropped out of college to run his store for a while. People try to rob me. I told you that story. Amazing how evil people are. My father warned me all my life as an immigrant how, how bad the world was. Boy, was he right. He said, man, everyone will try to get over on you, basically. And I was an idealist, you know, I didn't believe any of it. So he was, it was a tough customer because he came from a different world. You know, you come over here as an immigrant and you really see the, how hard life really is. You know, it's not a soft touch. So I told the doctor at that point or the next, yeah, the doctor, I want to be a dentist. He said, why do you want to look in people's dirty mouths the rest of your life? That was the end of my dental career. This is actually a funny joke because you can go down the line. Then I told him I wanted to be a lawyer. I never said that. I never, ever wanted to be a lawyer, ever, ever. I thought of working for the New York Sanitation Department, but I, I would do that before becoming a lawyer. At least that was more honorable. You clean sewers instead of cleaning people's pockets out. If I had the power, you know what I would do to class action lawyers? I would strip them of every penny they ever made. I would rip their children out of college. I'd take their grandmothers out of old age homes. I would take their assets going up to the third generation. I'd send them to Zimbabwe to be bait for lions. That's what I think of class action lawyers. They are the scum of the earth, the lowest, the vermin. The vermin of, vermin of society. Ask yourself why we have out of control lawyers in, in, in the class action business. Ask, ask yourself what they do. They attack legitimate companies and try to take them apart. They're worse than ISIS. Class action lawyers are worse than ISIS. Why do I say it? Because ISIS really can't harm us. Class action lawyers harm businesses every day of the week. If I have to look at one more ad on Fox News for another group of class action gangsters, I don't know what I'm going to do. What a bunch of sick people. I love their children. Oh, my father's an attorney. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to go work. You ought to go for, take a job outside of the Roman Coliseum selling jars of putanesca sauce to make up for what your father did. Savage.